Welcome to TFN Smart Trading Action Alert. I'm Laura Cadden. By refusing to describe China as a currency manipulator in its twice yearly report on exchange rate policies, the U.S. Treasury recently caused protests by lawmakers and interest groups who insist that China keeps its currency, the yuan, artificially weak to boost exports at the expense of U.S. manufacturers and U.S. jobs. Indeed, heavy intervention by China's central bank has resulted in the accumulation of foreign exchange reserves of more than $1 trillion. As a result, the yuan may currently be trading at its highest value against the U.S. dollar. But so far, it has appreciated less than 9% since the introduction of the crawling peg system in July 2005. Many analysts believe the currency could be undervalued against the U.S. dollar by as much as 40 to 60%. When U.S. manufacturers argue that the yuan is kept artificially low by China, they are really implying that the dollar should be trading even lower to make exports more competitive, a view that is very unpopular with the hard money crowd, to say the least. My guest today is Jack Crooks, noted currency trading specialist and editor of Crooks Currency Options, who will help us make trading sense of this situation. So, Jack, Congress has proposed legislation that could really produce great volatility in currencies right now. It uh, looks like U.S. exporters and manufacturers have the upper hand at this moment, mm -hmm. but U.S. retailers and consumers alike who really appreciate this and benefit from the uh, low Chinese cheap exports um, are already really objecting to this. Who's going to come out ahead in the long run? Well, it's a tough call. It could be nobody comes out ahead. Huh. Uh, but the, the new legislation, as you said, could create some real volatility here. The reason being it is new, some, some new thrust here. The senators in the U.S. are very unhappy with the Treasury decision to not label China a manipulator. So, what, so they're digging in their heels themselves, the U.S. senators, and saying, hey, we really have to put some screws to these guys, uh, especially on our own administration that's not taking advantage of this uh, opportunity to really hit, hit China where they think they should be hit is at the currency. Mm -hmm. So the new legislation will take China to the WTO, the World Trade Organization, um, complaints as dumping pro as 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 duty export duty problems where before they didn't have that piece of legislation in there and that could change because they can look at China now with a low currency and say they're breaking the WTO, WTO dumping rules and that's that's a new thrust the second new thrust is they're going to require the US Treasury to come into the market basically ex excuse me um, make a change of U.S. foreign exchange policy, which means they want to use the, f they will, they'll come in with the Fed, and the Fed is, is who implements the foreign exchange policy through the Treasury, and they're going to tell the Treasury that, hey, you come in here into the market and start buying and selling currencies based on what you think are over and under valuations in currencies across the globe, uh, fundamental under valuations uh, relative to the U.S. dollar. That's new, and there, there could be some real volatility if that, if that comes to fruition. Now, China's policy right now reminds me of Japan's. Uh, why is it that they're digging in their heels so much on the yuan? Well, it's very important for China to have a vibrant export sector. And they look at the currency as the key to, the ex to exports. Mm -hmm. Exports mean jobs for China. Jobs mean stability. And stability in China is paramount. What happened, and the reason we, we look at Japan as an example, or at least that's what China is looking at as an example, back in 1985, Japan was in a very similar situation during their economic development as China we had something that was called the Plaza Accord, where the G7, the group of seven industrialized nations, got together and said, hey, we have to make sure that the Japanese currency appreciates against the rest of the currencies because they're getting too much of an export advantage. What happened to Japan after that is their currency increased probably almost 100% in value over the next two years. Wow. That's an extreme move, and China is definitely afraid that could happen to them. Because what happened in 1989, Japan went into a 15-year recession. So China is really very concerned about that, and that's why they're digging in their heels. Huh. So what would you expect to happen if the yuan was ever allowed to float freely? Well, it could, a couple things could happen. Uh, but initially, one of, the, one of the worst things, I think, for the U.S. is if we really force a, a revaluation on China, they have no reason to hold our treasury bonds. And they hold a massive amount of our treasury bonds. They hold 1.2 billion in, in reserves, and about 70 percent of that is in U.S. Treasuries. So, if they were to, to dump 700 billion in treasury bonds, which they wouldn't need to hold that many, if they no longer need to suppress their currency, that could drive U.S. interest rates, you know, straight up. Because in effect, by holding that many treasuries, uh, China has been subsidizing the U.S. consumer and the U.S. <laughs> economy, so to speak. 
Um, so that could be the first problem. The second problem is if the currency value goes up, then the imported cost of Chinese goods to the U.S. consumer will go up. So in effect, the consumers will pay more for most of the things they buy now at Walmart at the everyday low prices. They will go away, and at the same time, they'll face higher interest rates. So it could be a real slowdown to the U.S. economy if we force China to revalue their currency. Uh, and that, so that could be a, a, a real problem. So we better be careful what we wish for here. Yeah, so domestically it could be problems. Now for the Chinese market, though, what would that do for them? It could be a problem there also. And the reason it could be a problem there is, is really this whole idea of rising protectionism. As we said earlier, the senators are very unhappy with what's going on. This new trade legislation is quite draconian from China's perspective. And China needs liquidity to keep their, their economy going. They need money to continue to pour into the country because, as we said, if, if tariffs go up, it's going to slow exports in China. And we know China is really facing a, really a, a huge financial bubble at the moment with all the money pouring in there, uh, pouring into the stock market, as we know. Mm -hmm. So a protectionist legislation could really pop this bubble in China and ripple across really all markets. So what would you recommend to be the best and most reasonable position for traders to leverage these kind of scenarios? It really depends on how you see this, how this plays out. If China decides on their own to allow the, the, the currency to appreciate faster than they already have, we could have an orderly procession of that, in which case I think that the best currencies would be all of the Asian bloc currencies, primarily the Japanese yen, uh, the South Korean won, and we can also see the Australian dollar and New Zealand dollar continue to appreciate in that environment because it would mm -hmm. be a stable, non-volatile environment. The markets know what's going on. But if we get some protectionist legislation, all bets are off. We could see some real rocking of all the currency relationships out there. Uh, for example, we could see the New Zealand dollar, the Australian dollar that have done quite well in the growth of China just, just crater, just collapse if we have some real protectionist uh, kind of a smoot hawley 1920s type of thing happen again, um, in which case I think the Japanese yen would do fine because of that, this whole idea of the carry trade, which we didn't talk about, what I've talked about before, though, uh, right. elsewhere. That could do well. And even the U.S. dollar could surprise because there's a lot of money offshore from U.S. Mul multinational players. Uh, mutual fund hedge funds have a lot of money offshore. If they see risk in the world due to this legislation. They could bring a lot of that money home. You could see a wall of money coming back in the U.S. market, so the U.S. dollar could surprise. Very interesting. Very, thank you so much for coming on the show, sharing your expertise. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Pleasure. To learn more about Jack's Investment Information Service, go to www.crookscurrencies.com. Please tune in next week for another profitable opportunity on TFN Smart Trading Action Alert. For TaipanFinancialNews.com, I'm Laura Cadden.